phone's upside down. What's upside down? My phone. Oh. So I'm not distracted from all the fun we're about to have. All of the fun. We just had... Hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, checking out our first episode of a movie review. And uh, we picked... We Joel picked... Yep. Uh, a great movie to start out with. Welcome to Sudden Death. Yeah, ev- you could have been in a movie. <laughs> We just watched a movie called Welcome to Sudden Death. It's on Netflix. Welcome. And uh, everyone talks like Batman. (laughs) They all talk like this. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, according to IMDb, Mm -hmm. this is the sequel to the original that starred uh, the great... Jean Claude. Claude. <laughs> oh, I got notes on my phone. Jean Claude Van Damme. What year was that? Uh, it was in the nineties. Yeah, it was ninety five, uh, ninety six. No, not that late. Oh, even earlier than that. Yeah, probably ninety two, ninety three. All right. I would guess. Let me check real quick. Ninety three. I would have been fourteen years old. Pull up the old. That's a. There's a lot of movies called Sudden Death. Are there any called Welcome? Just one, man. <laughs> and we're going to talk. Oh. Is there any called, like, Sudden Death? Keep out. You were right. 95. 95. All yeah. right. Yeah. So, so yeah. I was 16. You were 16. I was. I was, like, right in the middle of Jean-Claude's kind of. I was 12. Or maybe, actually, that might have been right kind of towards the end, That's I That's getting towards the end. 2005 is yeah, getting towards the end. because he was, like, blood sport, kickboxer. So he had, uh, so his. Time Cop. I'm just going to name John claude Van Damme movies. So, Kickboxer was 89. Uh, Bloodsport was 88. Ah, Bloodsport was That's so the good. big one. Yeah. Uh, and then he had... Universal Soldier. Not the Goldberg one. So, he had uh, he had Bloodsport. Uh, Cyborg. That was supposed to be a big Cyborg? One. What was that about? Uh, Cyborg. Oh, okay. He, he had uh, Kickboxer... He had my personal favorite of his movies, uh-huh. Lionheart. Lionheart. That's where they were like fighting on the beach and down the pit and shit. <laughs> Stay down, Lionheart. <laughs> uh, he was in, oh, another favorite of mine from him, Death Warrant. Death Warrant. That was a good in prison. One. Yeah. He gets the Sandman. Ooh, so that's a cool, badass the nickname. Sandman. Uh, then he was in Double Impact. Was that the one with Dennis Rodman? Uh. Because I'm yes. just thinking he was he was in one with Dennis Rodman too. No, double impact is where he's the twin. Oh, he's the twin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hence the double. Double team. Okay. Is with Dennis Rodman, I believe. Yeah, it's an action comedy. It and was, what they would do after shooting. That was pretty much the end of his. Yeah. Uh, that was '97. That was the last big one for him. Dennis Rodman was such a gimmick. Dennis Rodman. He was a good basketball player. Like don't great, get me wrong there. Great basketball yeah. player. Uh, yeah, then he had Time Cop, Street Fighter. Time Cop. Uh, Sudden Street Death Fighter, that's kind of where I was like, all right, yeah, yeah, Sudden Death. I liked it, though, 95. You watched it last night. I watched I probably haven't last seen night. it since 96 or 97, so. so. Yeah, I did watch Jinx, the- we both sewed at the same time. <laughs> Jinx, we're kids from the 2000s that know what Jinx means. Uh, so, yeah, like... The original is on right now, uh, Hulu. You can go, if you already aren't paying, you can, uh, if you have Hulu, you go and you search for it, you can get uh, Showtime, a free seven-day trial, and that's the way you can watch the original, the original Sudden Death, starring one Jean-Claude Or Vendor. go to, like, your local flea market and find it on VHS for, like, a dollar. Good luck with that. And get a VCR. If I can find a copy of it for a dollar, I'll pick that up. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is Welcome to Sudden Death. It's this is from sequel. 2020, and it's supposedly the sequel, but it's more of just a uh, reimagining. Reimagining is yeah. how you put it. Yeah. So yeah, because it's a basketball game. Like Sudden Death makes sense for the John Claude '95 movie because they're at a hockey game, right? And when a hockey game ends in regulation at a tie, they have what's called a sudden death, where the first team that scores wins. And, and in this basketball, is a basketball where it's called overtime. And, uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even go into overtime. A lot of spoilers, yeah, let's get that out of the way. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, we're, if you're, there's nothing in this movie that you're going to be yeah. mad that we spoiled for you. <laughs> like, go watch it. It's, it's funny to watch, you know, in that kind of way where you're like, what the fuck? 
But yeah, they don't even go into overtime. No, so the, the, the name of the movie is completely ridiculous. Let's uh, let's. But start he's with... a secure. He works at an arena, and there's a game going on. Yeah, so let's start with who's in this movie. Though. Yeah. So the star of this movie is Michael Jai White. Uh, do you know some stuff he's been in? I looked. I, I, I couldn't really place him, but you said Batman. So his big three uh-huh. is he was in the original, or he was in the Spawn movie. Is he Bane? No. Okay. No, he, that's Tom Hardy. Remember okay. Spawn? Yeah, I do. He he played Spawn. Okay. Uh, then he was... Uh, was he himself Spawn, and then he would... Because I think I saw the original Spawn. Yeah, yeah. So is like, that the one you're yeah, talking about? Yeah. Okay. So he, he's... It's... Uh, Something Freeman, I think. Alex Freeman or Al Freeman. Uh-huh. Al Freeman, I think, is his name. Yeah, but he, yeah. So uh, he, then he was in uh, The Dark Knight. Yep. And he plays a uh, one of the gangsters. The Joker's trying to, uh, he has the big money pile that he sets on fire. Okay, yep. That's, yeah. I do remember him now that you say that. And uh, then he was in uh, Black Dynamite. I, I did not see that. that. It's really good. And then they actually made a uh, Adult Swim cartoon. Uh-huh. And he does the voice oh, cool. of Black Dynamite on that. So, uh, yeah, so those are his big ones. And now you can put this right up next to it. Well, so this is <laughs> this is a sequel, a reimagining, whatever you want to say, of a John claude Van Damme movie. So, interestingly enough, he was in the original Universal Soldier with John claude Van Damme. Oh, wow. He was just a random soldier. Uh-huh. But then he graduated up to the sequel... Universal Ooh. 2, starring... Goldberg? Jean-Claude Van Damme and Bill Goldberg. Oh, yeah. Who's next? And he was... Uh, Michael Jai White was the main bad guy. Oh, I'll have to watch that, though. I, never, yeah. I don't think I ever saw that. Uh, in his very first roles, uh, this I mean, this was pretty awesome. He was uh, in Toxic Avenger 2. Oh. And Toxic Avenger 3 were All his right. first two big roles. And then he was in term, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. Who is so, he in? I'm assuming just some henchman. Yeah. Like, yeah, he wasn't, he didn't have a name yet. Uh, that wouldn't, like, really happen until his first big movie that people would actually, like, recognize him from was probably Universal Soldier. Yeah. Because he actually got to do some... Lead bad guy. He's a badass. I mean, he's, he looks like a movie star. So he was... He look like a movie star. So, uh, he was also in Kill Bill 1 and 2, but all of the scenes he did in both of those uh-huh. ended up getting cut... But there now, I guess you can watch them. Uh, right, because he wouldn't show his feet. He wouldn't show his Quentin feet. Quentin Tarantino was like, all right. Feet time, everybody. You're out of the movie. <laughs> Pop them tootsies out. Yeah, he had his toenails. He hadn't cut them for a while. Yeah, you, just, you can't show up. Keep them toenails like ready. You never know. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see those, apparently you can get the, uh, they're on the, the deleted scenes. Oh, all right. Like the DVD or whatever. I think so, I used to have the DVDs. So, uh, along with films, he has been in quite a few well-known t- uh, TV shows. All right. Back in the day, he was in Saved by the Bell. I remember that show. Uh, Martin. <laughs> uh, Renegade. You remember Renegade? I do remember Renegade with uh, Sor- Jeff. Nope, it- no- not Sor Jeff. <laughs> What's the guy's it's, name? It's, uh... Oh, uh, Shit. Lamas. Yeah, Lamas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only reason I think 81 R. <laughs> not age, Sword Jeff. Not Sword Jeff. <laughs> I would hate to be Sword Jeff. <laughs> My dad's name's Jeff. He's usually Sword. So, All right. Uh, New nickname. I think the reason, I think everybody our age knows Renegade because it came on after Raw. Yeah. So. See, I, I didn't know why I knew it, but I knew I yeah, knew it. Yeah. We all know Renegade, and we all know what else, do you know what, what other show am I thinking of that Zena? we all know? No. Silk stockings? Silk stockings. <laughs> Silk stockings is always my second answer to any question. Every, I don't get it right the first time. It's usually still Silk stockings because that's how much I remember it. Everybody our age knows those two shows. <laughs> well, that was like before then, the internet, before you could, that was like. That Renegade was, got uh, replaced by what? Do you remember? Was that Zine? Zine? No. The one with Jeff? Or the long? <laughs> <laughs> Who is Jeff? I don't know. <laughs> That'll be the show. It's probably what Jeff's I'm not a person. <laughs> okay. Renegade got replaced, or Renegade replaced. I don't know which way this goes. Desperado. Who was in that? Uh, uh, uh what's Jeff. The, Jeff. What's Sor- the long hair guy? It. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea who the long. <laughs> Are you thinking Kevin Sorbo? Yep. <laughs> not Jeff. <laughs> Kevin. 
Sorbo. Kevin and Jeff are equally bad names. They are. <laughs> sorry, uh, Jeff. So then, I'm not sorry to any Kevins out there. <laughs> leaving the USA. You had this coming, Kevin. Actually, I think this show might have been on USA. I was going to say leaving the USA Network, but I think this was on USA as well. Uh, living Single. Ah, Living Single. Was that out? USA? I don't know. I, don't I, I feel now. like that was Network TV. Fox. I think Living Maybe Single Fox. was Fox. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, then he was on a little bit more modern day stuff. I remember Living Single. He was on uh, CSI Miami, uh, the show The Boondocks. He did All the right. vo- he did a voice on that. Okay. Um, Arrow. C Dub. C Dub show, and then <gasps> Blackish. Okay. He's been on that. So Anthony Anderson. I've never seen that show, but because it's on ABC, and I don't. There's get like ABC. three spinoffs of it now. Oh really? At least one or two. Yeah. Yeah. I don't ever watch. Is this movie in that universe? I don't, maybe. Uh, Anthony Anderson could have came in and been like, Mama! <laughs> <laughs> that was good. We're going to overtime! I ruined it with that you second. Your, your mom's going to be coming if in. If you would have just left it alone. Uh, that so, was sore Jeff. He just <laughs> left. God damn it, Jeff. Don't yell. <laughs> so, uh, a couple more things about him real quick. He's actually trained. Uh, well, so he's a black belt in seven different styles of martial arts. Uh-huh. And he trains often with Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh wow! So, uh, yeah. So then, uh, the main bad guy in this movie is uh, played by Michael Eklund. He's who, so confused. Uh, yeah, his name in this movie. Did you catch his name? Job. You did. Okay. Yeah. I never caught it. In I the movie. read it and then I heard it once in the movie because the rest of the time they called him Alpha. Got, yeah, but there Alpha was a point what... where, like the when the stadium owner was staring at him. He's like, what's all the heat about, lady? And she's like, Joe! She's like, Joe, be crazy. Yeah. Uh, I only know him from uh, Your the show Psych. All right, Psych, yeah. I've which seen is a couple one of, of the best shows of all time. Uh-huh. Uh, but he's in the episode Cloudy with a chance of uh, uh, something where they go to court. I forget what it's called. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's in that one. So that's where I know him from. Did he talk like this? He did not talk like this. He and then he would just talk like this. Then he would go back to talking like this. Uh, and then uh, Gary Owen plays Gary Gus, Owen. the janitor in this. Yep. Gary Owen. Uh, Gary o- As I like to call Owen. him, Green Shirt. Green Shirt. <laughs> he's a, a really popular comedian. Yeah. He's like he's, the uh, white. He's, he's the comedic relief of the movie. Yeah. Because, I mean, the whole movie's funny, like, unintentionally. And then he gets the, like, kind of... He's supposed to be the comic relief, yeah. like... But he points out a lot of shit. Yeah. We're like, we're pointing out, I'm like, what? Uh, so but yeah, stand-up comedian. He's been doing com- comedy for... He's the, uh... So he's a white guy, but he plays mostly to a black audience. Yeah, he's on a lot of, like, the Kevin Hart tours, a lot of yeah, those yeah, kind yeah. of shows. Yeah. So he and... came up in, like, that scene. Yeah. He jokes a lot about having a black wife, black family. Right, yeah. I mean, he's fu- he's a... He's yeah. fucking hilarious. He's, the, he's good in the movie. Not I mean, really. Like I, I, he's good in the. I laugh at him. It's but yeah, he's really not good. It's acting funny wise. to me that somehow like a guy. So comedians, like it's all about timing. You yeah. gotta you gotta have your timing. Yeah. And somehow like <laughs> him trying to act, his timing is so bad on every delivery he has. I would like to see him in a good movie because I feel like this movie they just shot scenes like. Probably over, they're like, all right, try it this way, try it this way, and then when whoever edited it, edited it, it, it that's a. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see what else he's because he's in. Uh, he's in some pretty terrible movies. But he always seen. He's like he even brings up Die Hard in the movie, and of course the main guy. No, he doesn't know what Die Hard is. So he was in. Uh, you'll notice a common theme amongst the movies he's in. Uh-huh. Uh, he was uh, in uh, Daddy Daycare. He played uh, just the nerdy white guy. Yeah. He was in uh, Think Like a Man. I don't even know. Played a is. white guy. Uh, he was played in. Played a white guy. <laughs> he was in Ride Along. Uh, as Kevin cra- Hart. As Crazy Cody. Yeah. Uh, he was in, uh, or he was in Think Like a Man Two. Yeah. Returned as the white guy. <laughs> uh, he was uncredited, which is ridiculous, and Get Hard. Kevin Hart. Uh, Kevin Hart movie. And uh, he was in Meet the Blacks. Never which, heard of that. Uh, was actually pretty funny. It's yeah. a uh, parody of Meet the Parents, uh, The Purge. <laughs> oh, okay. Was, yeah, 
It's got uh, Michael. Uh, it's Epps. not a parody of Meet the Parents. No, it's Meet the Blacks. Uh, it's. Oh, I thought you were got just... Mike Epps in it. So it's uh, I love Mike Epps. Basically, a black family uh, gets run out of their hometown. Uh huh. I forget why now, because he like I think he like rips off. He's ripped off everyone. I think I'm he's like kind of a con man. That. But they move out to Beverly Hills uh, on the night of the purge. Uh. So then like all of the white people from Beverly Hills. So yeah, it's uh, it's pretty. That did fu- not come in my purge box set. That's weird. That's weird. It yeah, should have. Should have. It's pretty funny. Uh, and he was in, uh, uh, yes, Welcome to Sudden Death. Welcome it's his to, last welcome. role he's done so far. So, yes, yeah, so the corona then, hit. Then uh, the main, uh, our female lead of this movie is Diana. Is that the the owner of the stadium? She's the new owner. Because of... really there isn't a female lead. Right, you're I right. Mean, I guess she's, she's the closest thing to yeah, it. Yeah, because well, he's married, his wife's in there. Yeah, his little girl. Uh, but her name is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, uh, Sabrine Rock, S-A-B-R-Y-N, Sabrine. Yeah, that sounds about right. So here's the interesting thing. I was, I was uh, When you first got here, I said something about Chris Jericho. Uh-huh. So I was looking through her acting credits, and uh, she was in a show called But I'm Chris Jericho. And I had never heard of this. What? It's apparently a web series. It had two seasons. Uh, first season was in 2013. Huh. And it was 10 episodes. Second season was in 2017. Yeah. And it was six episodes. And the wrestler Chris Jericho is It's like Chris it. Jericho's show. Oh, cool. I've never heard of it. I might have to check that out. What's I it think called he, again? Uh, but I'm Chris Jericho. Okay. So he plays himself. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I just, I never heard of it. I wonder how I got that role. Probably suck some dude off. But I was trying to think of like 2013, what he was doing... Wrestling, it, but was he a bit like? Did he have a was that WWE when he was going yeah. through this stuff with like Kevin Owens? Maybe nah, it's 2013. I don't know, man. Time early. flies yeah. so fast, like fucking seven years. Well, I don't even know what that means. So yeah, so there's four there's, score seven years ago. Chris Jericho had a show. There's who's in the movie. Yep. Uh, and it's written by or it's so it, it lists two writers. Uh, screenplay by Dallas Jackson. He also directed it. And uh, then it says screenplay also by Gene Quintano, who also, Gene Quintano, wrote the original. Okay. So, uh, I don't know if, because then it lists also. I don't like Dallas Jackson. I didn't like the direction <laughs> in this movie. Right. Then it I, lists, didn't like uh, the, I didn't like the, uh, I feel like they had to put the other guy's name just because they ripped it off so much. Like, I wonder so how here's much what, he really wrote. So, it says, it also credits him based on a screenplay by. Okay. So, I would say at some point he has written a sequel. Yeah. Probably back earlier when the first one came out, uh-huh. even. And it had to do, like, and then this guy got a hold of it later on down the road, fixed it to current modern day. <laughs> oh, he fixed it. So I do wonder if the sequel to the movie was originally written back years before, and, like, he was now a security guard at a basketball game. Yeah. As a John And the Claude same vehicle. thing happens. It's, ju- it's supposed to be a John Claude Van Damme movie. Yeah. No matter where he goes. I can't get away from this shit. <laughs> and I'm too old for it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, how's this one start out? It uh, does a little bit of character development. Right off the bat. It shows uh, John Claude one of me. What's his name in the movie? Uh, in the movie? What can his, I call this guy? Uh, White? His what, name in the movie name? is John? Jesse. All right, Jesse. Yeah, uh, the played main by character. Michael Jai White. Yeah, he's, it shows him like in the army or something, I guess. And there's some sort of terrorist. Some sort. I don't know. They 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 all three are white, but I think they're trying to play like a different yeah they ethnic all, group yeah. It's and a it's just awkward. like yeah they he saves the day kind of you know but then like there's a there's a theme in this movie where bad guys just laugh so like he, he like defeats all the terrorists but then one like sets off a bomb and then just laughs about laughs it laughs first they all do the maniacal like yeah. <laughs> cartoon evil guy laugh and then there was an explosion so he got a little shrapnel in the back a little it, shrapnel <laughs> a little so this blew my mind like at first he's, he even did the, th- the, the cheesy line where he's like looks like all that crossfit really paid off when he killed all the terrorists yeah. and then like all right this is gonna be a lighthearted movie like let's settle in and have fun so then him uh and a woman and uh, another guy, another guy yeah. all take off running out 
Because the dude set off the bomb and just started yeah. laughing. So they do the, uh, you know, stereotypical action movie. Slow mo. Building blows up as they jump away. Uh-huh. But, like, I immediately notice that the guy in the back barely jumps away. Like, he's <laughs> way further back. But then usually when that scene happens, everybody gets up yeah. and dusts themselves off. Oh, and boy, that fine. was close. In this one... They are fucking riddled <laughs> with debris. Like it's just sticking out of their back. They're just laying there like, ah! Yeah, it's not a good time. It's very jarring when you're watching it. So now in the original one with Jean-Claude Van Damme, I'll, we're going to kind of keep going back and forth, uh-huh. I think. Uh, the original su- starts with, uh, they do the same little setup. But this time he's uh, starts with firemen running into a burning house. You can hear Jean-Claude Van Damme yelling for help. Help! Help! They uh, it shows Van Dam and he's like holding onto a little girl and he's trying to protect her and save her, but they're stuck where like the floor's fall- uh-huh. falling in. Well, so then as he's yelling for help, all of a sudden the the roof collapses on top of them, and the firemen rush in and they start digging like they pull stuff off of them. And John Claude Van Dam raises up and he's covered in debris. Uh-huh. And you're just like, oh, that's, you know, he saves a little girl. Then it shows a little girl, her eyes are wide open, but she's dead. Oh. <laughs> so the movie just starts off, little girl's dead. Did he close her eyes? He did not yet. We talk, okay, because we that's talked about That's not who he closes that. the eyes of. Oh, but he does do it in that movie. He does do it in this movie, that's though. the only thing the new movie's missing. So, yeah, he, so right off the bat, we got a dead little girl. Is that a dream for John claude uh, No, it's okay. it happens. And, oh, I mean, it happens, but in the beginning of this one, like, that's a flashback dream, because then this right. little girl wakes him up, and he almost punches her. No, in this one, he's uh, he's divorced from his wife, yeah. and he goes and he hey, picks... Hey, it happens. It happens, I hear. And uh, he goes and he picks up... Uh, well, he, he just shows up on his one of his kid's birthdays, uh-huh. and uh, he ends up... Daddy's here. He can take them both to the uh, hockey game. It's the game... It's the finals, and it's the, the last penguins. game of the finals. Penguins yeah. and the... I want to say Rangers. Sure, but I don't think that's who it is. No, because they're both in the East. I have no idea. It's you Penguins and somebody. Uh, uh, anyways, so like they Penguins the, and John Claude, goddamn Van Dam. Uh, the there's original. a scene in the new one where uh, the kids are talking right off the bat, like they're like arguing with each yeah. other, and like the little boy gets a good dig in at the little girl. Yeah, something about like her. Ought to pull her lip over. You ought to pull your lip up over your head. Yeah. So, in the original, I've seen this movie three times I, now. Yeah. In the original, uh, she uh, so the little girl comes outside, and the little boy says something mean to her, or the somebody says something to her, and she's uh, sign languaging to her mom or uh-huh. whatever, which never comes up again. <laughs> But, uh... It was the 90s, man. The, the little boy... This is the funniest thing in the world to me. I don't know why. The little boy says, uh... She's practicing to be deaf. <laughs> and that was just funny to me, because that's kind of what learning sign language is. You're practicing to be kinda. deaf? Kinda. Just like, in case. If you go deaf, you got it. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so her doing the sign language thing, like, you think... Oh, well, later, later she's going to signal yeah, something. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Nope, that never comes up again. <laughs> so the original is just as bad as, as uh, the sequel. So yeah, from there in the new one. Oh, and I wanted to bring up something I noticed that I noticed this in a lot of things. Uh-huh. It's more often than not in cartoons, but it happens a lot in movies and TV shows. Uh, if you notice on the table, the kitchen table that morning at breakfast for them, they had a plate stacked with toast. <laughs> And I don't know if you've ever noticed this or not, but every movie, TV show, cartoon that has a table of people eating breakfast, yeah, there's always a big ass plate of toast <laughs> with like one square of butter. Is on this the top a piece. is this a common thing? <laughs> I usually will make just like my own toast. I don't I don't stack it up. Like I didn't really grow up with a family. Like, we didn't have family. <laughs> we didn't have any toasters. We didn't have like meals together. Yeah. But so like, is this a thing? families have done where they just make a bunch of toast <laughs> not my family and no one ever eats it but <laughs> like you want toast to my family you go make it <laughs> you know we're, we're all responsible for our own toast or sometimes you'll see a stack of pancakes yeah but no one's eating them there's just all this food that just no one eats. yeah so anyways i gotta go honey that's the I'm real late for work that's the real plot hole of this movie i think <laughs>
three times and I missed the toast. I can't believe it. So I'm then, really myself. so then, what's what's happened with this with this movie? I uh, just the kids are awful actors, and uh, like the one the boy, like they they're supposed to go with to the dad with the dad to work at the arena. Yeah, they think that they're just gonna be walking around an empty arena. He's like, oh well. Just so you know, your favorite player's opening game is there today. So the boy's like, all right, let's go. So Yeah, so he's... It's, it's not even a meaningful game. It's the first game of the season. Yeah, this is the just... Of the NBL. Like, yeah, this is so they couldn't use the NBA. Yeah. So this is the NBL, the National Basketball League. And we've got uh, the home team is the... Phoenix... Uh... Knights. No, I thought the Knights were the New York Knights. Maybe so. Phoenix. Dang. <laughs> I don't have it. I thought you wrote down. it down. Nope. <laughs> Phoenix. Uh, something. Phoenix versus New York. But yeah, they're in Phoenix. That's, yeah. it's a home game for Phoenix, and he's a security guard, and he gets there, and first, no one. No, there's a running joke that no one believes that those are his kids. Right, because because they're cute. <laughs> and this guy's so ugly with yeah. his giant muscles and <laughs> his fucking chiseled jaw. <laughs> yeah. And his piercing eyes. Just stop! It's so <laughs> gross, Josh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so disgusting, gross ass. And like John even White. us, we're like making fun of that, and the guy makes fun of it in the movie. He's like, "Why can't anyone believe that these are my kids?" Yeah. So every time you're like that, the movie just does it for you. You're like, yeah, why does all the bad guys <laughs> like all the bad guys show up in like two vans and they're really coordinated? And they theatrical. somehow just get right in, like yeah, yeah. So they they do uh, they bring their they sneak their weapons in. By they all carry in a little uh, a little briefcase looking thing, and they uh-huh. all have three D printers. Yep. So they're all... there to fix the Wi Fi, supposedly. The whole oh, company. so there you go. So yeah. they have the little technology boxes. Yeah, <laughs> technology <laughs> boxes. That's what they're called. That's what I call them. <laughs> uh, so we're yeah. not going to dumb it down for you guys, okay? <laughs> no. We respect Look, you too much. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Try hanging with us. All right, keep up. Uh, so so they yeah. had their thing in once in the <laughs> technology box. And, uh, yeah, so they all have 3D printers. They all print off their own gun, which the, these guns apparently <laughs> sometimes have rules. When the movie needs them to do one thing, they do one thing. When the movie needs them to do another thing, they don't do anything. They established right at the very beginning that these guns... Will, it's like an electrical charge. You have to be right up close. You only get five shots. and Sometimes. I think sometimes it's only got one <laughs> shot. Uh, so, for the, so then, for whatever reason, Michael Jai White's character... Just cannot figure out how to work these guns. <laughs> like, he can't figure out who the bad guys are. He keeps because they because they come in as Wi-Fi people, but then they change into security guard yeah. outfits. And they kill what they think they kill the whole security other, yeah. team. Yeah. So then, uh, <laughs> so th- like Michael Jai White figures out that the security guards aren't who they say they are pretty yeah. fast. Like yeah. he kills two <laughs> pretty fast. Yeah. But then him and Gary Owen are walking around, and they just, every time they see a security guard, hey, who's clearly not somebody they recognize. Who are you guys? <laughs> yeah, and then a fight ensues. Uh, we get our second maniacal laugh. And the, by fights, you mean poorly. Very, sometimes very slow motion. Like I said, it looks like they practiced for like 30 minutes, and they were like, all right, let's go let's ahead and just it. do we the scene. Yeah, yeah, it's all slow. It's real. Like the fight that first happens when he takes his kids down to the seat. Yeah. And, like, the two oh, rednecks yeah. get in the fight. And the guy throws the worst fake punch I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> ever. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, don't forget that during this entire movie, basically everyone talks like this. It talks like it, yeah. The only ones that don't are the kids, the kids and, and the Gary women. Owen. Yeah, and the Gary Even Owen. Even the women, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the good guys and the bad guys, they all talk like this. So then we get uh, Michael Jai White's character actually fights uh, his real-life wife. Was that guy Urkel? Michael Jai White yeah. was not Urkel. What was Urkel's name? Michael Jaleel White. Oh! Pretty close. Or was he Urkel? He was not Urkel. I'm telling you this for a fact. Like, okay. he was not... Urkel was not six foot something and jacked. <laughs> People change, Josh. Yeah, well, there's not in this case. Okay. So, yeah, Michael Jai White, not uh, he fights his real-life wife. Yep. She plays one of the bad guys. <laughs> She does the maniacal laugh. He walks up and he's like, hey, who are you? She's like, oh, I'm new. She acts like, so she ends up shooting herself in the head. <laughs> uh, for no, she. Because him and Gary Owen are the most bumbling, bumbling <laughs> yeah. idiots. Yeah, so, yeah, they, they take her gun from her. 
uh, after she accidentally shoots herself in the stomach. Yeah. And then uh, Michael Jai White hands it to Gary Owen. He fumbles and drops it. And she's got it. And she could probably just go ahead and kill the guy that just kicked her ass with karate. Yeah. That you know is going to be a threat to your plan. And then Gary Owen poses zero threat to you. (laughs) Less than zero. Just let him go. Yeah. But instead of killing Michael Jai White on the spot and being like, well, solve this problem, she gives this really weird evil villain monologue yeah. where she's like, you'll never guess what the plan is. <laughs> but then tells him, she's like, when the game's over, yeah. you're all dead. I told you you wouldn't guess. And then she just shoots herself in the head. Before, but laughs. But first. laughs like an evil witch. It's, it's weird. And then Gary always says, God damn, that was a crazy bitch. <laughs> exactly. That's Which is exactly what you say what after says. somebody shoots themselves well, when in front he of you. Fr- So I forgot that when, so the first guy Michael Jai White kills uh, he has a fight in, a g- in the gym, yep. and he ends up uh, breaking the guy's neck over a barbell. But uh-huh. so when Gary Owens like he surprise pops up, <laughs> yeah, like he's bit, he's whatever, not even phased by it. He just goes, "Man, some weird shit's going on around here." Like he's looking at this security guard he knows that just broke the other. For all he knows, another security <laughs> yeah. guard's neck, and he's like, "I don't recognize him. <laughs> he's dead. He I don't recognize him." He says that, "Man, you killed him." I'll recognize him. <laughs> like he's completely okay. And he's with like it, sipping then. on his big, his uh, his big his gulp. Big gulp. Yeah. So, uh, boy, that was so much needed comic relief. Now, as we said, uh, the the bad guy in this one uh, is played by that guy I know from Psych, uh, Michael Eklund. Uh huh. His name's Job. Joe Alpha. So Alpha is what That's he's his so, code name. So uh, he delivers his lines. With 46 different accents at once. He's a walking multicultural festival. Sort of. He's, yeah. He's not good at any of them. No. Uh, but so what was his plan? To get a million dollars? <laughs> Which, I mean, right. I a million dollars would change my fucking life. <laughs> Like, how much money did all that shit cost to set up? The 3D printers alone. Look, guys, alone. when all this is done, we're each going to get, like, $7,500, okay? Because there's 13 of us. we gotta get the we got to get the technology boxes. But he also, at one point, just, like, acknowledges that the woman that owns that he's taken captive, the owner of this team yeah. now, is a billionaire. Yeah. So he's just like, but I just want a million. Like, she did ruin... She did easily... Yo, how she did ruined she ruin his, his life, life by making him kill a family that he thought was Muslim, and they weren't Muslim. They were American. Somehow she's like... I think she may have used to be, like, in some... I, I, I never... In the three times I've watched it, I've never caught, like, how it was right. her fault. Like, I don't... Somehow she sent his team... She says she exposed him. Yeah, okay. So I'm thinking she was a journalist. Okay, maybe she was a journalist. Okay. Maybe so that, yeah, she said something about... She was just a rich, powerful black woman. I told everyone your, I exposed your secret. Yeah, she was like a team owner, the new team owner. Yeah, so... But, yeah, so he wants a million dollars. I'm going to laugh every time you say it. <laughs> really don't know why. <laughs> a million dollars. Uh, even in the original, which takes place in 95. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, so the main bad guy in that one is Powers Booth. Uh, wow, that's you know a who, really cool name. You don't know who Powers Booth is? I don't Powers know Booth is. is fucking incredible. Yeah. Uh, not just in this movie, uh, in everything. He, uh... The name sounds familiar. He's... You'll probably hear. Take a look at him. You'll notice him, probably. Uh, I'm trying to turn my computer here. Can you see him? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh... He's a real asshole in most of his movies. Yeah, he's so good at it, though. Uh... He was actually just in, he's uh was in Agents of Shield. That's his uh, newest thing he's been in. Uh but he's been around for a while now. He was in uh my one of my favorite movies he's in is called Southern Comfort. I don't think I've seen it. It's that. really really good. It's from 81. It's an old one. Uh he was in Red Dawn. Uh, let me see uh he's been in a Tombstone, Sudden Death, uh Sudden Nixon. Death. Um, they should have had him in the sequel. Did he die in the first one? Yeah, he died. He uh, died real good. Well, they could have uh, brought him back. Deadwood. He was in Deadwood. He great now. He played. Yeah, that's where, when I, that's where I've been trying to place him because I really like Deadwood. He that's was in Twenty Four. He played uh, Vice President Noah Daniels. Uh, he was in MacGruber. MacGruber. Yep. 
Uh, he's done a lot of voice work. Um, Gerber had to suck his dick so he could uh, continue yeah. on with his mission. <laughs> yeah. He was in. He's really uh, left a legacy, that guy. He was in Sin City. He played uh, Senator Rourke. So, yeah, he's a great fucking actor. And in this movie, he's amazing. Yeah. Like, he's the. Just does not give a fuck about, like, you know, most bad guys still have that, like, we have a line that we won't cross because yeah. we can't be the worst. We can't be Hitler. Yeah. Powers Boost, like, I don't give a fuck. Either, <laughs> uh, he, uh, so he takes, and this in the original, they take uh, the vice president hostage. He's there to, he's there with the uh, mayor. Uh, and they're there. Be, he's being honored at the game. Uh huh. So, yeah, he comes in. He's a big fan, is what he says. He's a big fan of the team. He comes in. He meets all the hockey players. One's naked. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, nice outfit. Shakes his dick. Yeah, shakes his dick at him. Uh, so, yeah, he gets taken hostage. And, uh, uh, so, yeah, there was, we were just talking about this, and I forgot that I took the note here. Uh, a sequel to this, to the original was written. Yeah. Uh, it was planned for a fall of 1997 release. Man. Uh, but the film underwhelmed so bad at the box office, uh, the original did, that yeah. they scrapped the project. So, but I watched it. So this is that. This is probably the... He probably got his hands on yeah. whatever the sequel screenplay was. But that probably means that the sequel was just... <laughs> John Clavin and him is now at a basketball game. He's a security guy. He's a security yeah. guard now. Uh, yeah. But then, I guess around the same time, I'm, uh, I think Last Boy Scout came out. And that kind of takes place at a football game. Yeah. So, okay, who yeah. knows what all got passed around. I mean, that was a little too much. That was a good movie with uh, Love that movie. one of the Wayne Damon brothers Wayans. and Bruce yeah, Willis. Yeah, Bruce was amazing. Yep. One of my favorites. Uh, so, he tells, there's a scene in the movie where, uh, in the new one, where... Uh, welcome the, to Welcome to Sudden Death. Death, where the bad guy says something to the daughter of Michael J. White. And uh-huh. you were like, man, that's like a little girl. Like, what does he say to her? Like, I'll cut you up into pieces. Like if I don't, you know, if I have to yeah. tell you again, I'll cut you into pieces. So in the original, Powers Booth uh, says to Van, John Claude Van Am's daughter, uh, "What he he like the, when they they first bring her into the press box and uh-huh. tell her whatever." He's trying to find out what uh, her dad's name is because she says something about my daddy's gonna yeah. whatever you know. My he, daddy's gonna kick your ass. He sister. says he gets right up in her face and he says. Uh, uh, would you like it if I filled your whole mouth with spiders? Jesus! <laughs> I didn't know where you were going to take that. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I was like, what is he going to fill her mouth with? Yeah, fucking spiders. spiders. What an evil ass There's thing There's a spider say. in this movie, too. Is there? Michael Jai White's boss turns out to be a bad guy. Oh, okay. Which you can tell because he talks like this the whole movie. Oh, everyone did. But he's like, spider here. I got the fly. Uh, and then, uh, so earlier in the movie, of course, they had, he had the, uh, or the little boy had the, she's practicing to be deaf. Yeah. Line or whatever that made me go like, oh, that's crazy. So then another thing is a little bit later, Powers Booth says, uh, cause it turns out he used to be in the secret service. Oh. And, uh, one of the guys that's in the press box with the VP is of course, a secret service member. And, uh, so he says, Powers Booth ends up saying, uh. You know, why do you guys tell everyone your secret service if it's supposed to be a secret? <laughs> and I'm just like, man. I'll be here all weekend, guys. Like, whoever wrote this movie, Quinn, whatever his name is, he was just like, I got some questions, <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to ask them. Uh, that is a good question. So, yeah. In it's this, a hack question, but it's good. In uh, this movie, uh, so. There's a governor and a mayor. Governor and a mayor there. With the new team owner. Who has her boyfriend? Who's a rapper named Millie? Who's like the whole time walking in the stadium is like streaming live on his cell phone. And he's like he's every stereo like type, he's, so like a rapper yeah. rolled into one. Yeah, and it's, it's just bad. Like, they don't seem like a real couple. Like you don't believe that they could be a real couple. No, in no world is this professional businesswoman who's the new team yeah. owner of the Phoenix, whatever they're called. Yeah. Uh, Dating a guy who's about to release a song called Booty Clap. <laughs> he still has to record the video. That's the big hit of this uh, movie, though. Even though they do use uh, Cypress Pain. Cypress Or Payne? Cypress Hill. <laughs> we were trying to figure out if Cypress Hill or House of Pain. House of Hill? <laughs> yeah, it was like, how I can just kill a man. Yeah, I don't know how they afford, the, how they, uh, they spent their whole budget on getting that. For like 30 the seconds of that. it. Uh, so yeah, so both movies now at this point, uh, the, the daughter of the main good guy is now in the hands of the bad guy. So 
And then both movies now for the next 30 minutes, 30 painstakingly <laughs> long minutes, maybe 40. Montage! They go around <laughs> grabbing all the bombs that have been planted in the uh, arena. So, And apparently each bomb is like a snowflake. Because they're all just little individuals, and they all need to be treated yeah. differently. At least, like, so in the original, like, they only really show Van Damme uh, cutting, and, like, they show you once how he figures out how to... Uh-huh. And then from there, you just, he grabs his knife, he cuts some wires. Yeah. We're done. We know how it's working. This new one, they didn't know how they wanted it to work. Because the first one was all just what he had to do. He just pull had a to piece out. gently pull a microchip out. Yeah. Then the second one, he had to cut the wires, uh-huh. or one wire. The third one, he had to cut both wires. And then the next one, he had to cut the wires and, and pull, pull the card out. out. Yeah. And some of them, he would take it off the wall. And some he wouldn't. Some he wouldn't. Yeah. And, then and they it, would, like, high-five <laughs> and Gary Owen. Yeah, so Gary Owen, the whole time, is driving him around on a little, like, uh... I don't know what you And the arena is packed. Like a little go-kart. Yeah, type it, yeah. And the arena is packed until they don't need it. Until they... Then it's they, empty. Yeah. Well. Like, all right, we need to kill some people. Like, let's empty this. Let's go to an empty part of the arena. Uh, and then, like, the the bombs in, the new, in this new one, they're, like, not really well hidden. No. They're just basically out in the open. They like, look they, like little outlet boxes or something. They like. might be, like, behind a trash can. <laughs> the one was. The rest yeah. were, like, all head level. Just. But in the original... Uh, like, all of them are, like, in places that you go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's where I'd hide a bomb. Uh-huh. Like, they're all, you know, in the in the uh, basement, like, the and sub-level. They're, just, they're searching around this whole giant arena looking for these little gray boxes. Yeah. So, uh, so that's, the, both movies do the same thing at this point. They're just, they show the main good guy taking out the bombs. Good guy. Uh, Let's in, use that in like parentheses because he was not a good, he, good guy. And both of them, uh, the guy that you think is uh, on the outside that's helping the guy, the good guy on the inside, uh-huh. turns out to be the he turns out to be one of the bad guys. Yeah. Uh, in the case of the uh, original, it was like the head of uh, the the Secret Service. Like he's outside. Uh huh. And in both movies, both movies they like, they find out who this good guy is, and he's got like a he's too you know he's too big of a problem he's he knows what he's doing yeah uh and then the uh in in both of them they try to use the uh screen on the scoreboard to get messages across yeah but in the in the original he uses the scoreboard outside to type a message saying uh explosives whatever we'll try to disarm and then there's a bad guy that stays outside the building who re- immediately grabs a rocket launcher and <laughs> blows the, the board up so they can't do that anymore. In this one, they try to use the scoreboard screen where the kiss cam. Yeah. And he's going to send a message. And it's this dude that's working the board who's just you know doing his job. He uh-huh. showed up today to do his job. Yeah. The two two bad guys break in. <laughs> My, Michael Chai White, our hero, Bounces just the fucking fuck out. runs the hell out of there. And the dude that's just there working his fucking nine to five job yeah, gets right? shot in the, in the chest, and he looks like he has sand flying He's out of his big chest. Guy. That is, I'm a big guy. I know. I'm just saying. I don't have sand in my chest. I don't think. Don't you? I don't know. Actually, you might have to shoot me. All right. Uh. So yeah. Uh. So yeah. Our hero in this one kind of just doesn't give a shit that people die. No. Um. He just wants to talk like this. He doesn't ever really seem to give a shit about anything. No. He only kind of wants to get his daughter back. Like, in the original... <laughs> like he feels like maybe it's probably the thing he should do. Like, I don't want to insult uh, anybody here. But, like, when when John claude Van Damme, uh, when his acting Rest skills... Rest in peace, he's John still claude alive. Oh, really? When his acting skills, like, make you look like the worst actor of <laughs> yeah. the time, it's not good, Michael Jai White. It's like I said I, when we were watching. I was like, it's it's bad writing and bad acting. It's not like, good. W- usually, good one of them might be able to cover for one, but when they're both bad like that, it's just yeah. It's... So, uh, so we're coming to the end of the original, and uh, you want to kind of walk us through. I don't remember the end of the original. You don't remember the or I'm sorry, oh. not the original, the the new one. Yeah, you kind he's... of walks through the end of the new one. He, 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 of course, you know, is victorious. Michael Jai White. Jai? 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 Jai is Jai. Okay. He, uh, 
they're up on the bal- up on the scaffolding, like fighting. And normally, you know, he would just like kick him off or something. Right. And, and like the guy was like, oh, and they show him like fall to his death. Yeah. Well, in this one, he like straps a bomb to him, takes a knife and cuts into his arm and then cuts down the length of his it's arm. ridiculous. Like stabs him twice. Like he's just like, I just want to see the blade yeah. go in. Yeah. And then he kicks him over the scaffolding. He blows up. The whole arena has to be wrecked at this point, or at least but that not portion. even a little bit of damage. Yeah, and then like ten seconds later, he told you know he finds his son in a seat, and it like shows the the arena in the background and everything. It's fine. perfectly fine. Yeah, like two bad guys have fallen over rails on the somewhere, and they just walk off. <laughs> and so also when he, after he slices his man's entire arm open, oh God. stabs him a couple times, yeah. straps a bomb to him, to him, throws him over. After this, after he's witnessed a man blow up, he's just, like, standing there with his kid and the owner, and he's just like, so, guys, how's everything going today? Talk about a rough day at work. Like, he's completely yeah. fine. This this fucking psychopath <laughs> feels nothing no. about what just happened. And then when they, like, says up, he's like, well, I just knew your mom would be mad if something happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. But, so, right I mean, before... Gary Owen shows up and rides him off on his little car. Yeah. Uh, so before they get to the scaffolding to fight, uh, Michael Chai, so they, uh, they're in the press box. Uh-huh. And uh, this is where the game is coming down to the wire. Yep. And at the end of the game, of course, if uh, they don't have, if the bad guys don't have their million dollars. <laughs> it might be a billion, but I'm pretty sure it's only I a million. Think it was a million. <laughs> If they don't have it by... Wow, the, could you imagine, guys, a million dollars? Like, Michael Jai White did them a favor by killing <laughs> almost everyone. Yeah. So they don't have to split it much anymore. <laughs> but, uh... We're all gonna get... <laughs> uh, they're in the press box, and he's... The bad guy's got the little explosive, the detonator. In game. And so we're thinking, like, this is when you say... It's, it's not even called a sudden death in, yeah, you know, in basketball. basketball. So I was like, oh, yeah. So we're like, well, so they tie the game up. Because they, they were down three, and the new star for Phoenix hit a three, yeah. but got fouled. So we're like, oh, okay, they're going to go to overtime. Yeah, and but then, he got fouled, so he had to go so to the he foul line. He goes to the foul line, and then he makes it. <laughs> he makes it, the whole and, team wins. Uh, that, the first game of the season. We don't go to overtime. <laughs> don't go to sudden death. <laughs> and uh, so the bad guy's like, all right, well, you know, fucking gonna murder all click, of you. Click, 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 click. So he clicks his little button. One explosion goes off. It's yeah. the one Gary Owen has just found. It, and somehow he knew it was the only one. He's like... Oh shit! I thought we found all of these. Yeah, and uh, so first he tries to detonate, or he tries to stop it, cut yeah. it. It doesn't work. Apparently, that was one that needed cut, pulled, <laughs> all of the victims. Yeah. And then he just goes and throws it in a dumpster <laughs> with a plastic top lid, yeah. not even one with like a steel lid or anything. And then he's like four feet from it when it blows up. <laughs> yep. He doesn't get any shrapnel in his no. back. He just stands up, and brushes himself. I figured he have like nachos impaled in him <laughs> right. or something. <laughs> So, yeah, so one explosion goes off. The bad guy's like, what the hell? Only why? And then... A little bit of smoke comes into the arena. somewhere, Michael Jai White crashes through the window. <laughs> yeah. Into the press box, and he's holding a t-shirt gun. So... <laughs> I forgot about that. He shoots the female <laughs> henchman in the head. Like, with, it's just a t-shirt gun. And he's like... He's like, oh, is it? It's like doing, and it like hits this woman. She's done. She's dead. <laughs> yeah. And then he turns to the other henchman. Twenty percent death bliss. Shoots him, and for some reason, <laughs> the fucking t-shirt like milk splatters on the wall. It's a cereal gun now. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Why is the shirt so milky? I don't know. We round it. We round it. We went back and watched that part again. So yeah. So then, in the time that it takes him to fucking t-shirt gun <laughs> two people to death, uh, the bad guy grabs his daughter yeah. and they take off running. So then we get to the scaffold, um, and then like you said, as soon as like Gary Owen drives them off, they walk outside like no, no, nobody's gonna question them. Lab, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, we get... I mean, the whole security team was killed. The fake security team was killed. All those dead bodies. Yeah. So, uh, then the credits hit, and we get, like, a little mid credit scene yeah. where one of the bad guys from earlier... <laughs> one of the non-distinct bad guys... Right. ...without a name, that didn't have any lines... Yeah, he, uh... Well, he tells the little girl... He, the little girl kicks him in the knee, and then he yeah. tells her if, he does that again, if she does that again, 
He's gonna cut. Maybe he's they, the they, one that tells her he's gonna. It slice doesn't her show pieces. like the that bodies in there, do they? They're just like no. It's that guy. Okay, it's that guy that she kicks in the knee. All right, that's the one that. Okay. You can see the other two to the two white guys. All right. So yeah, the security guys come in, or the cops come in. They're like, <laughs> they did the thing where they were like slapping their leg before they popped. <laughs> yeah. They all had like little like dances. Yeah, some sort of war dance before he fought Michael Jai White. Uh, so yeah, and then credits roll. That's the end of the movie. You're like, wait, didn't he say he killed three terrorists yeah. in here? There's only two. There's only two. And they're like, Bruh. so they're setting up a sequel <laughs> to where so twenty years the from now, main bad guy yeah. is the guy in this movie who just kind of well, it's what they did in Universal Soldier, I guess. Michael yeah. Jai White was just a soldier. Yeah. Like, he was a nobody, and then in the sequel, he was the main bad guy. Oh, I can't wait for the sequel. And in this movie, too, uh, Michael Jai White's character has never even heard of Die Hard. He has no idea what it <laughs> is. Because the, the Gus, the janitor, makes a Die Hard reference, because everyone watching the movie is like, wow, this is kind of like Die Hard. Because well, the original was yeah. was basically Die Hard in a <laughs> hockey arena. Yeah, and they even, like what you said, when he like went into the Ender's Box, it was just like Die Hard, where he, did the hose through the window yeah. of the building. Yeah. yeah, so he's like, what's Die Hard? God damn it, this is serious! Yeah, so... Uh, like, yeah, it would be a funny world. movie until they needed it to be serious, and... Uh, so in the original, the ending is ten times more batshit insane. Uh, it's... Let me see... He doesn't, Van Damme doesn't use a uh, t-shirt gun in the original, but he does at one point, midway through the movie... Uh, he's like in the basement looking for a gun, but he, or uh, for a bomb, but he stops and like randomly uses some of like the fucking like equipment uh-huh. to build this little, uh, pressure gun. So he runs a hose onto a little, like a uh, tank of some sort. He like puts the tank in his back <laughs> belt loop and then he runs the hose up through a sleeve. No country for Van Damme. Uh, sort of. <laughs> and then he takes like a, he makes like a little bullet or a little uh yeah bullet out of a by making a taking a screw uh-huh and pushing it through something and loading the screw down into the hose so he makes this like they go out of their way to show him like building this thing like macgyver immediately uses him <laughs> on the next bad guy he sees to kill him yeah so like now he's just got this hose in his fucking shirt sleeve unless he takes his shirt off again to remove the ho- it's ridiculous <laughs> Uh, like, they clearly just had the idea for this little hose thing, and uh-huh. they're like, we have to do it yeah. somehow. But, like, it'd be dumb if he just ran around the whole place shooting people <laughs> with, a, with a hose, right? Like, that'd be crazy. So we'll get it for one death, and you don't forget about it. <laughs> so, uh, oh, so here's, I was going to tell, I was telling you while we were watching the movie that uh, I hope something happens in this one mm-hmm. that happened in the original, but i let you know if it didn't. So, in the original, uh, in the middle of disarming all of these explosives, and uh, knowing that his daughter's being held prisoner, yeah, he uh, he's trying to get away from two henchmen coming after him, and he runs into the locker room where the goalie he the goalie just came back to the locker room and got and grabbed an oxygen tank because he's been sick. Goalie's hard. So the John Love Van Dam runs in trying to escape. He sees the goalie sitting there. They they close in on the goalie's outfit. And then the next thing you know, the two henchmen run in. They see the hockey player laying on the table, but he doesn't have his outfit on him. Yeah. So Q, I do remember that. Q, John, Claude Van Damme walking out on the ice <laughs> with the goalie outfit. Oh, John Claude, what won't you do? For a good five minutes, this movie becomes a fucking sports movie. <laughs> where, like it's like a sitcom. Where John Claude Van Damme is now, through a series of miscommunications... <laughs> The goalie <laughs> of Game Seven for the Pittsburgh Pirates Penguins. or Pittsburgh Penguins, <laughs> and earlier in the movie, the little boy, the young, the son, just randomly mentions the fact that his dad used to play hockey. Oh, that's good. And John John Claude Van Damme's like in Canada, <laughs> and the the he, penguin, he's not from Canada. The penguin players are like, oh, we'll show you what real hockey is, and I'm like. I thought Canada had real <laughs> hockey. What are we doing? So, oh man. So the movie so nice. has this dramatic scene where Van Damme has to focus himself to stop the puck from going into the goal. Yeah, because if not, then well, the whole we're, thing we're won't in the middle explode. of the game right now. Yeah. The score doesn't come into play yet. Oh, okay, we don't know that it's going to come down to sudden death. 
Sure, we can make assess or we can make judgments based on the movie title. Sure, but we don't know. He this didn't, one didn't. He didn't know he was the new in that one. Movie. Didn't. Yeah. So yeah. Welcome to sudden death. That doesn't happen. So then he, uh, so he he stop. He makes the like the game winning save basically, and then he does like a hand signal to his son. Uh huh. And his son's like, "Oh my god, it's my that's dad." Dad. And then that's really all we hear about that. <laughs> uh, so then he just goes back and he changes out of his outfit because he's whatever. He's had his hero moment. And then he fights the mascot. Right? Middle of the middle of the goddamn <laughs> saving the building. Uh, no, he kills the mascot right off the bat. Okay. that's the first thing that got to die. So, anyways, re- the ending. Uh, so he's he's saved the game. Uh, he's now you know in playoff records. <laughs> um. <laughs> He's killed most of the henchmen. Uh, he so now he climbs onto the roof of the of the arena, uh-huh. and uh, he kills one guy. Uh, he like throws it like the, it's a dome arena. Yeah. And, like he throws him off the dome, and you see the guy just slide, slide down, down the dome, screaming. Uh, then he uh, for some reason, or so then he starts opening the dome roof. No one notices this. Uh, <laughs> like you know. And uh, another guy comes up to try to stop him. Uh, they fight. They're right on the edge of the open dome. Why would the dome open? Well, he hit the lever. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I mean, I just... <laughs> oh, because domes usually open for, like, day games. Even in Pittsburgh? I didn't think that one did. Yeah, okay. I, figured, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, so, he ends up throwing this guy off uh, from the dome. And this guy lands on top of the scoreboard. And it just starts exploding. Yeah. There's just sparks everywhere. Uh, so then Van Damme then drops down and grabs some cables. Uh, and then he takes, he from the cable, he jumps onto this, like, what I think is supposed to be, like, the moving camera rig. Uh-huh. And he, like, rides it down <laughs> and then jumps off of that uh, onto... Who is he, Vin Diesel? <laughs> He's better than me. Oh, he jumps onto shut it down. Uh, another cable. And when he's first uh, dropped down, before he jumps on the little movable thing, uh-huh. he uh, grabs this jar where earlier he makes like a bomb, like a homemade bomb. Mm-hmm. So he has the jar and he straps it on his uh, shoulder like because he's tied a rope to it. And uh, so now he rides down, jumps on this cable. And he just throws this homemade bomb on top of the press box, <laughs> which blows a hole in it. Which your daughter's in there, man. Yeah, like you're just you just throw a bomb, <laughs> but it blows a hole in it. He drops in. He kills some people. Uh, the he the the vice president when like the when the, the bomb goes off, uh-huh. the vice president like covers a little girl to oh, help her. That must have been part of the plan. Yeah, yeah he knew. He knew. <laughs> Uh, so then, yeah, so then, uh, Powers Booth, the main bad guy, grabs a little girl, takes Powers off running. Booth. I love that. They're dude. doing the same thing as the original, the new one does. They go for a helicopter. Uh, the, uh, so then they're, they're fighting on the, uh, on the dome roof again. And Van Damme <laughs> grabs, as the helicopter starts to go up, Van Damme grabs the ladder. Oh, of the helicopter. That's a '90s move. And it's some, he ends up somehow killing somebody. I forget how he kills this guy in the in the copter, but the helicopter goes straight up and down. Uh huh. And then, since it can't keep going up higher, flying wise, it just starts to drop down through the dome, <laughs> slow motion as Powers Booth is trying to get to the. Get to the uh, steering thing, uh-huh. which I don't know how he thinks he's going to correct it. This point. Yeah. we're done, and then he slow mo drops past Van Dam, and him and Van Dam see each other as the helicopter just falls down to the arena and blows up. Oh the man! The roof's fine though. The roof somehow survives. The roof is not explosion. on fire. It's good. The roof. The, the roof. roof. The roof is uh, good. And then uh, the little girl, or they go back and they get the son because he never moved out of seat. Just like just in the like, new yeah, one. Yeah, just like in the new one. And uh, then they uh, turn to walk off, and that's it. Like, it immediately ends. <laughs> it's the quickest ending ever. Just out of Bad the guy's damn. dead. We're done. Yep, that's it. So, yeah. Wrap this shit uh, up. The whole him being a fireman and the little girl dying, that never really comes up again. Sign language. Sign language doesn't. The little boy understands it yeah. at some point. 
So I don't know why the little girl was learning. <laughs> so yeah, uh, both movies fantastic to yeah. watch. I highly recommend them. I recommend almost all early nine mid nineties John Claude Van Damme yeah. movies. I do too. He's, he's pretty good. So which one do you think was better? The original. The original. The original. Uh, I mean, as far as a movie goes, like if you want something to like get high and make fun of, uh-huh. the new one. The original too, really, but yeah. the new one for more. The original so, one actually has it's like so unintentionally bad. The new one. It is. Uh, and it's just, I mean, they just take the same idea. They're like, <laughs> how about a basketball game? Yeah. Perfect. Let's how do about it. it doesn't get over time? <laughs> yeah. Like, Swerve. Uh, so, uh, it's on Netflix, like we said. Uh, give it a watch. Let us know what you think. We'll be, uh, we'll be back with another one of these, I think. Or I think we'll be doing some more of these. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, this one, uh, we still got a, like a week or so to go till Halloween. Uh huh. When this comes out, we'll have like you know, I think it'll be like a week or so left. So I'm sure before October is over, we will have another one of these out for cool. a horror movie. Yeah, we'll have to do something scary. Yeah, we're looking into uh, a zombie movie. Uh huh. We might do it. So, uh, yeah, it might be a Corona. I think it's Corona, Corona Zombies. Yeah, we might cover that. So we'll see. We got a lot of suggestions from you guys. We asked you all back for bad movie suggestions. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of them. So uh, we'll just start going. And then we didn't it. listen to any of them, and I just picked this one. Yeah, and then Joel was like, "You know what? <laughs> Fuck everyone that helped us." I'm going to Netflix. Yeah. So uh, until then, thanks for listening, yeah. and uh, you can check out our show, our uh, actual podcast episodes about crime and things like that. Check those out every other Monday. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you do go and give us a listen on our podcast, anchor.fm backslash uh, middle aged and mediocre. And you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and other places, middle aged and mediocre. Make sure you put that dash mark between middle and aged. So, yeah, thanks for listening. And uh, we'll uh, come back with you real soon for another movie review. See you guys.